rejoice when I was born again. Had to unplug me from myself and sin. Then I found out that I'd been grafted in. Started abiding in the vine. Plugged into Jesus, I can feel the flow. Filled with the Spirit, I can stop and grow. Bud and blossom, bear and let it show. I just want to welcome you to the program today. We want to speak today about the fruit of the Spirit. And if ever we needed to exercise the fruit of the Spirit, it is now in this time, in this world, which is literally upside down. There is so much confusion. There is so much fear that people don't know what to do next. People, their nerves are on end. They, they don't seem to be able to think straight. This is not a time, folks, to play games. This is not a time to make jokes. Many people are mourning the loss of their loved ones that have died through the COVID-19 and through many other things. The economics, the political situation has never been so upside down. We need, you and I as Christians, we need to Produce the fruit of the Spirit. Now, if we go to the Word of God, I'm sure you know the Scripture. I'm talking about Galatians chapter 5, and I'm reading from verse 22. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Nine fruits of the Spirit. If ever this tired old world of ours needed to see the fruit of the Spirit, it is now. I want to really encourage you to exercise those fruits. Now, I want to speak to you today about Dr. David Livingston. Now, those of you that are watching that are not in the continent of Africa will probably know he's, he is probably the most famous missionary explorer in the world, actually. Right? He came from Blantyre, Scotland. And he was a mill worker. He educated himself and he became a medical doctor. He had tremendous resilience. That little boy would work until 8 o'clock at night in the mill. Then he would come home and go to school until 10 o'clock at night. He educated himself. He went to university. He became a medical doctor. But he had a tremendous interest in nature, and he became an explorer. Now, I want to tell you something that's very special to me, <laughs> and it's got nothing to do with the program. My late mother... My mom and dad came from Scotland. I was born in Africa. I'm an African. But her mother was a Livingston. That's right. 
And she came from the west coast of Scotland where David Livingston came from, the Glasgow area. My dad's family came from the east side of Scotland, Aberdeenshire. But I'm so proud, and I really mean that, that hopefully, maybe, who knows, maybe there's a bit of Livingston blood in me as well. I have been to the place in the heart of Zambia where they buried David Livingston's heart underneath a tree when he died. He died at Chief Chutambo's village. And even today, I went up there with that big yellow truck, that seed sower. Even today, it is right in the wildest part of Zambia. It's beautiful, it's natural, but it's very, very far from the capital of Zambia, Lusaka. And I've been to that place. And the previous president, Kaunda, put up a monument there in his honor. But there's a tree there. You see, when he died, he died of malaria. He was 60 years old. That's right. He hadn't been home for years. Okay. One of his little girls, the first time he ever saw her, she was six years old. He buried his wife, who was Robert Moffat's daughter, underneath a baobab tree where the Zambezi River goes into the Indian Ocean. And Dr. Kirk said that he watched him. He cried like a little boy when his wife died. She was only in her 40s. This man paid a tremendous price for the gospel of Jesus Christ. He was also very instrumental in abolishing the horrific slave trade of that time. He had malaria countless times, and eventually that malaria killed him. They buried him underneath a tree. Now, not him, but his heart. They opened him up, and they took his heart out, and they said his heart remains in Africa. And they buried his heart underneath a tree. Then they embalmed his body and carried his body 1,500 miles, folks. That's 3,000 kilometers to Zanzibar, and they went with the ship to Britain because they wanted to show the British people that they did not kill him. He died of malaria. His remains are in Westminster Abbey today in a very prominent place. In fact, when, he, when they had the official funeral, I think the Queen and government and everybody was there, David Livingston. And what they call him in Central Africa is the good man. That's his title. And Livingston, the town, remains Livingston. And Blantyre, the town in Malawi, is the name of the town where this man of God was born. And there's a beautiful big mission station called Livingstonia. I want to say to you that this man was a man who produced the fruits of the Spirit. Now there was another man, and his name was Henry Morton Stanley. Henry Morton Stanley came from a broken background. He was an orphan. He became a newspaper man. And then he became the representative of the New York Daily Herald newspaper. And the owner of the newspaper said, I want you to go to Africa because they have lost David Livingston. They don't know where he is. They haven't heard from him. I want you to go and find him. Now, he didn't say that because he was a Christian. No. He said that because he wanted a scoop. He wanted a big story for his newspaper. So he gave Stanley lots of money to get porters and to get all that equipment he needed and then to go and find him. Now, I want you to think about something. In those days, Africa was uncharted, okay? And Africa is a very, very big continent. It would be like sending a man to go and find a needle in a haystack. That is how impossible it was. Nevertheless, Stanley went and he found Dr. David Livingston. Can you believe that? Folks, I've read articles, I've read manuscripts that were written just after Livingston's death. He died in 1873. I've got a book that was written in 1880. And it was written by a man of God. And he explains everything. You know that Stanley, when he came into this village where David Livingston was. He wasn't dead. Everybody thought he had died. His own son, Oswald Livingston, tried to find his father. He took a whole big group of porters 
and uh, explorers to try and find him, and they couldn't find his dad, and he came back home. But Stanley, who was an unbeliever, he was a rogue, actually. He was a ruffian, and he says it himself, short-tempered, a, a go-getter. He actually found the man of God. And when he found him, right up in the north of Lake Tanganyika, right in amongst all that s the slavers, the Portuguese, and the Arabs, and they were, they, were, they were taking people, God's people, and capturing them, and taking them down to the coast, and taking them overseas to America and all over, selling them as slaves. Right in the middle of all that, Stanley found Livingston. And what I love about this whole story is he says, Stanley says in his memoirs, I walked into this clearing and I saw this gentleman come out of a grass hut and he stood tall and he was immaculately dressed, clean. He said, but his clothes were stitched many times. They were worn out. Okay? Even his teeth had taken strain because of the lack of food. And when he was eat, given food, he could hardly eat it. A man of God. Now, he said, I didn't know how to approach him. <laughs> he said, because remember now, Stanley was from the USA. He didn't know whether to hug him, whether to shake his hand. He didn't know how to address this man. I mean, he was overwhelmed, first of all, that he had found him. The only white man in Africa at that time, in Central Africa. And he walked up and he took his hat off. And he said those words that everybody in the world knows. Dr. Livingston, I presume. Makes you want to cry. That's the only way. He didn't know how, how to do anything. And he took his hand. And Livingston took his hat and he said, yes, I am Dr. Livingston. And Stanley spent four months and four days in the presence of this man of God. And he says in his memoirs, not once... Did he hear an ugly word, a word of criticism, any bitterness in his heart? Remember, people had left him. They, they had just abandoned him. You know, all the London Missionary Society and the National International uh, uh, Geographic Society, the whole lot, they had just given up. Well, yeah, he's dead. But Stanley found him. And then Stanley spent four months with him. He said, never once did I hear anything come out of this man's heart. Only goodness. And what uh, this man, David Livingston, said when he saw uh, Stanley was, he said, you have brought me new life. He said it not once, many times. And the two of them would sit and they would talk. And they would talk for hours, hours. And you know, when you spend four months and four days in the wilderness with one person, you get to know them. And Stanley was anything but a believer. He was a ruffian, but he said that this man impacted his life and changed his life, I'm sure, like no one else. <clears throat> four months and four days, I lived with him in the same house or on the same boat or in the same tent, and I never found fault in him. Words spoken by Stanley. I want to say to you today, you and I need to do the same. We need to be those who speak less and love more. You know, it's not even what you say, sir, madam. It's who you are. Livingston only led one person to Christ. That's right. King, uh, uh, King Shishele. He was the only man that Livingston led to Christ himself, as, and he became a full believer. And yet, do you know a more famous evangelist in Africa? I know of evangelists that have, and wonderful people, by the way, who have preached the gospel to millions of people, but they're not as famous as David Livingston. Why? Do you know that they've got a statue at Victoria Falls of Dr. David Livingston, the good man, the doctor who helped People, all kinds of people, Arabs, Portuguese, British, locals, he helped whoever he could. What he did was he exuded the fruit of the Spirit, love, joy, peace, patience, long-suffering, loving-kindness, gentleness, self-denial. 
And that was his life. And I want to tell you, to this day, you can go to Zambia, and any child from any school will tell you exactly who Dr. David Livingston is. And, that, and he's been dead for how many years? We need to do the same. You know that in my little prayer room on the farm here, I have got a, a framed plaque with a branch, just a twig actually, of a tree, and I've pressed it. When I went to David Livingston's burial place, I took a, a sprig off the tree under which his heart was buried. Apparently, it's the second tree that's been planted there. The first one was burnt, but this tree itself is a huge tree. And I took that, that little sprig, and I've pressed it, and I've put it in my prayer room to remind me of this man. Okay? We are not talking about the man. We are talking about the Holy Spirit in the man. And often I speak to you about quiet times, and I speak to you about a postinia, which is the Russian word for that little house at the bottom of the garden where people go and spend time with God. I've got that place. But I've also got one in my mind because I travel a lot, and often I can't get home in time to have my quiet time. So I have a quiet time in my mind, and this is not positive thinking, madam, so don't think that way. This is called meditation. And that didn't come from the Far East, it came from Jesus. He spent more time in meditation than anybody else. And when you go to that burial place where Dr. David Livingston's heart is buried, you walk along a little path, and you go down to a wetland, and there's big reeds. They stand about 12 foot tall, and they blow in the wind. And there are natural trees, indigenous trees, on both sides of the path. And I sit there on a log. This is in my mind. I was there. And then I just quieten my spirit. And then I start to pray, and I start to speak to the Lord. And the Holy Spirit ministers to my spiritual man. I want to say to you today that that is how you expend the fruit of the Spirit. No other way. It's not by getting a degree in theology, and I have no problem with education, by the way. All my children are well educated. But you need to spend time in the presence of God. Do you know that Dr. David Livingston, when he died, the night before he died, he was very, very ill. They had carried him in a hammock for days. Those people loved him. They made a little hut. And they put him in a little kind of a cot. And they got a young, a young boy. And they said, I want you, they want you to sit by the door. And you watch that old man. And if things don't go right, you come and call us. And in the middle of the night, this little boy saw the giant, the man of God, get out of his cot and get on his knees and start praying. But after about two or three hours, there was no movement. And the little boy got a bit concerned. And he went and he called Susie and Chuma, the two fa the famous, his very favorite helpers, who took his remains all the way to Zanzibar and then on a ship all the way to the UK. Can you believe that? And they called him. And they came into that little hut. And then they walked up and they saw the man of God had died. He had died in the kneeling position, praying to his God. Folks, I want to tell you, if you think about it, he had not found the source of the Nile. That's what he wanted to do. Because he thought that if he could find the source of the Nile, they could bring commerce and industry into the heart of Africa and abolish this horrific slave trade dealing in human flesh. That was his objective. He never found it. The people back home supposedly forgot about him. So in the eyes of the world, and maybe in his heart, he was a failure. But I want to tell you, those letters that he wrote faithfully back touched the heart of the British government, and they officially abolished that horrific sore in the heart of Africa. David Livingston. And I want to tell you today that the fruit of the Spirit is what people are interested in. They're not interested in anything else. That man finished the race. You and I need to finish the race. Many of us start well. We've got great plans. David Livingston had it. He wanted to take a ship all the way up the Zambezi River, but he got to Kobara, Kobora Bassa, 
in, Moz in uh, Mozambique, and there were rapids, and he couldn't. He had to take a ship apart, put it together. It was a disaster. And people died, botanists, um, metallurgists, all the experts, they died of malaria. He had to carry all that burden on his own shoulders. But he carried on. He didn't stop. And I know, I'm looking forward to shaking his hand in heaven one day because he was a man who loved God to the end. Folks, maybe you haven't led many people to Jesus Christ. That's right. Maybe your plans have failed. Maybe you're in a situation, you're sitting there, Angus, you say, my business has gone bankrupt. My wife has died of the COVID. Angus, is there any future? The fruit of the Spirit is what you've got to continue to produce. And you can't even do that. God can do it through you. David Livingston never gave up. He never backslid. He never turned his back on God. And I'm telling you now that in Africa, that man's name is better known than any other missionary I've ever heard of. And I've studied them all. Why? Because he produced the fruit of the Spirit. And he never gave up right to the day that he died. I want to pray for you that the Lord Jesus Christ will give you the strength to continue to produce the fruit of the Spirit, which is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. That's what we've got to produce. Don't worry about anything else. God will take care of the rest. We're going to pray now, and I would like you to pray this prayer after me. Because I really feel that many of us watching this program are feeling a bit down. You're not seeing the results that you expected. Neither did David Livingston. But when he was tested, and when Henry Morton Stanley visited him, a man from the world, he was amazed at the love and the fruit of the Spirit that he saw in that old Scottish missionary. Do you know on the day that they said goodbye, he was supposed to leave early in the morning, 5 o'clock. By 8 o'clock, they still hadn't left. He couldn't leave him. And they had to walk, and Livingston walked with him for a, a while, and he pleaded with him, please come with me. Don't stay here. Come back. You've done enough. No, son, I can't. I've still got to finish the job. And he was very emotional when he left David Livingston because of the fruit of the Spirit that he had experienced through that man. Let us pray. Pray after me. Dear Lord Jesus, that's right. I want to ask you to forgive me because I've been walking by sight and not by faith. 2 Corinthians 5, 7. As I ponder on that great missionary, African missionary, David Livingston, who gave his life for the gospel. Not only his life, but his whole family, his wife and his children. Lord, he continued to display the fruit of the Spirit. And that's what we want to display. Not bitterness, not anger, not unbelief, not turning his back on Christ. No, to the end. And as a result, tens of thousands of Zambians Tanzanians, Congolese, people from all over, Angola, know David Livingston as the good man, the man of God, the man that loved Jesus Christ, the good teacher. I want to be like that, Lord. Please, Holy Spirit, fill me with the fruit of the Spirit. I ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, there we have it. Now, what we need to do is to produce it. And we don't have to try. We have to spend time in our postinia, in our quiet time room daily. That is where we get the fruit of the Spirit and then go out and deliver. David Livingston must have spent many, many, many hours and years on his own. He had time to produce the fruit. And he did it. Until next time, God bless you. And goodbye.
rejoice when I was born again Had to unplug me from myself and sin Then I found out that I'd been grafted in Started abiding in the vine Plugged into Jesus I can feel the flow Filled with the Spirit I can stop and grow Button blossom bear and let it show I am his and he is mine You won't believe how full your life can be Or your potential possibility Button bloom and bear and constantly thrive Abide in you continually 